Hello to the side and back. My name is Toki Uzuru, also known as Toki. And in today's video, I'm actually going to be starting uh, starting back up with my media messages videos because I liked doing those, but like, ugh. I was a bit too stressed out when I was doing them. Uh, anyways, two things. One, I might actually just be growing a unicorn horn. I have no idea. And two, not only is this going to be the return of the media messages videos, but this is going to, one, end up being a two-parter. I've written everything down and I know that this is going to be one of those I don't want to end up having it longer than it actually needs to be type video, uh, video ideas, which is the reason why it's going to end up being a two-parter. But part two of two, this is also just bringing in, again, music. Because... I said media messages and while most of the media messages videos I did were about movies or about uh, TV shows that I would go ahead and watch, music has also been one of those things where I end up getting a lot of things that I learn about myself or that I try to implement into my uh, life through music. I also did an entire video talking about how I typically use music in my uh, spiritual practice, so might as well get this started while we can. So welcome to the last couple of uh, media messages videos for the year. And in this segment we're actually going to be talking about a album, an album that came out recently. Okay, recently as in, as of recording this. What, about a week ago? A week ago? Hold on, I'm about to check. Slightly more than a week ago. <laughs> and instead of just choosing one particular song from said album, I'm just doing the entire album because... Jeez, it hit too hard. As I am a person that ends up getting too emotionally uh, invested into pretty much whatever, whatever I watch or listen to, the way I explain it is I embody the piece of in, um, media slash entertainment and then when I step out of it or when it ends I have to give myself a moment to like <laughs> let all of it leave. <laughs> this is probably another reason as to why watching certain movies or certain shows just leaves me emotionally drained and like physically done. The album in question is Indigo by RM. Now, a few quick things that I should have put at uh, earlier in this video, but it I'm looking at the thing I'm looking at where I wrote what I wrote down now. Number one, this is not necessarily going to be an analysis video. That would take too hecking long, and then there would end up being ten uh, videos because each song needs a deep analysis. But also, I don't think I have the attention span to be able to, to do all 10 on this album. So I didn't originally intend for this to be an analysis. However, we will get into the things that he said about uh, the songs in question. Two, this is also um, based off of my own experiences and my own interpretation, interpretation of translated lyrics. I'm very well aware of when it comes to translation, there could be meanings that are lost. That is one of the problems when it comes to having to translate a song into a language that you can actually understand. Number three, as far as when I'm recording this, there have been visualizers and music videos released for this album. Or for the songs off of this album. So I will also be um, taking bits and pieces of those to go ahead and add on to um, how I'm relating to the songs off of this album. Something I didn't write down, there is also a performance that he did in an, uh, I'm guessing like a big art museum type thing in New York. And like he, he expressed that that was like Best way for me to put put it, his magnum opus for the album um, promotion. So I will also be using that. 
to add on to uh, again to add on to me explaining how I'm interpreting this album as a whole. So the way this is the way I split this album up into two specific videos is because there's 10 songs on this album, five goes on one video, five goes on another. Because I am not stressing myself out more than I actually have to for this. <laughs> and we will start it off with track one, Yoon. Now while this song may have not actually started the entire writing process uh, when it came to the album, it did inspire RM to use the color indigo, which he has interpreted as like a mixture of black and blue. Best way that he explained it is the color of denim jeans. At first when he said indigo, my brain immediately went to like a mixture of blue and purple and the idea that the blue represents him and the purple kind of represents BTS. And it's just like a transition into his, uh, a transition into his solo career. That might also um, be part of it, but that's not what he explained. That's exactly what I interpret it as because indigo for me is like the middle point, the middle color between blue and purple. The song itself was an ode to a Korean painter that inspired the name of the album with the spell casting vocals from Erica Badu driving home the main message of the song. Now, funny enough, this entire album itself does have some sort of storyline and I will be getting into the storyline, but not in this video. But while I was listening to the uh, song while I was walking, because of course, that's one of the things he put on the thing. It, I keep on saying the word thing because I can't really think words. That's going to be something else I bring up into in this video. One of the main things I was thinking about while listening to the song was when do you remember actually feeling like a free human being? Most people would end up saying it would be around when they were kids. Specifically, RM says in the song about around where I was nine. But like, yeah, possibly before you end up getting hit with the reality that is reality. And a part of the message here was that as artists, we have to go back to that mindset of being human, only listening to what your heart and or soul is telling you. However, that is easier said than done. However, we will keep this message in mind because it will be coming up in the second uh, track off of this album, Still Life. Now, the way I would explain the song is an upbeat song that continues the message from earlier. <laughs> Essentially, living in the moment and trying your best to go ahead and enjoy life as it is. Crow! I'm trying to stay focused. It's not working. And before we actually get into the message that this song specifically goes into, uh, best wordplay? This man dumb said this saw this the title itself has like two separate meanings. Still life as in like a still life painting or a still life sculpture. Sculpture? Because you know, of course he's into art. He literally just had an entire song named after a Korean painter that inspired him and left him with the message that's in the song. But still life also just meant means like Maybe it doesn't seem like you're moving, but you're still alive. Excuse me, Crow, you're being very distracting. I, I wish for you to stop. <laughs> that also means that still life could also just mean not dead, possibly not seeming like I'm moving, but not dead. For example, in the music video, I told you I was going to be bringing this up. He's supposedly on a moving train with a whole bunch of people around. They're also supposed to be moving, but at some point in the music video, everything freezes. Everything like stops in mid movement. 
And honestly, the, that entire sequence kind of reminded me of um, the music video for the Childish Gambino uh, song, Sweatpants. Where he's walking around a diner of all pla a diner of all things, while everything else I think is like still. <laughs> but I think still life also breaks it down, uh, continuing another meaning in the song of things breaking down and like rebuilding as something else. The way it looked in the music video, it was almost like it was um, water bending. If you remember watching Avatar The Last Airbender. Or The Legend of Korra. Now when it came to the New York Art Room performance that he did for the song Still Life, there's a... It's a bunch of... It's a bunch of rustic vibes. Like... Large pieces of metal put together into like several different sculptures around the room and it only like adds on the idea of breaking things down and building them um, up to create something different. So while although it might just still be this one thing you can go ahead and um, breathe life back into it by creating something new. Track 3 All Day another upbeat song different type of upbeat that talks about finding yourself and everything that keeps that fire in your heart burning. Even if that means going against social norms. Now even though that specifically is the uh, like the overarching theme when it comes to the song specifically, one of the things I ended up taking out of it was one of the things that brings me, that breathes life into me and one of the things that I'm passionate about, passionate about, is giving out information that I have. Essentially trying to make sure that everyone, uh, as far as knowledge is concerned, can be as close to on, as on the same page as possible. But in order to do that, I would have to go against the grain and not be silent. Because it seems like the world just wants to completely silence you and have you not speak so you don't go ahead and point out the problems and can't um, try to help with solving them because it may not be working for everyone but at least it's working for me. That's not how it's supposed to go. But it also kind of reminded me that I dream like a revolutionary. Similar to Hamilton. Now before we go and move on to the next song, I do want to go ahead and point out I did see the uh, little references in the second verse. The line specifically, we got dynamite in our DNA and while that just reminds me I am a chaotic being by nature and I do have a tendency to just completely change things seemingly for the worse, eventually for the better. I also just like the um, the nod, like the nod and point, like we see you. All right, moving on. Next song, track four, forgetful. I ended up bringing this up when I was talking about the, the last one. It's a soft, string focused, coffee shop vibe, simple, comforting, and it's more about being absent minded because there's already so much in your brain. I feel like that was a personal call out, but because of the fact that he is specifically stated that this was him in that moment as well, I don't feel too bad about it. And one of the things that I ended up burp, and one of the things that I ended up seeing in the song specifically is in the first verse, it sounds like um, he was singing about being stuck in his head and trying to do things to numb the pain of being stuck in your head and then later on in the second verse it sounds like you're being you're like stuck in a specific space that's not a mental thing but it's just like a literal stuck in this place or 
Stuck in status is what my brain decided to go ahead and bring up. So if that makes sense, we're moving on. But I personally like the mixture of his low comforting voice with um, the female one. I completely forgot who it was and I know it's, prob it's probably for the best because I don't want to mispronounce it. But I also don't feel like looking it up right now. I'm sorry. But the mixture of these two voices specifically kind of feels like a warm cup of something. Like a warm cup of coffee, tea, hot chocolate on a cold day. And the last one, at least for this video, is the song Closer, which... Ooh, there's a lot. I would describe it as a mid-tempo song. Not necessarily an upbeat song, but also not a slow dance song. Well, maybe it could be. We're moving on. And a few of the things that I ended up um, picking up when I was listening to this song is, one, there's like this um, radio changing sound that's uh, in the middle of the song, and it kind of just sounds like the beginning of the song Insane, a has -been Hotel song that was specifically about the radio demon. Now, the sentiment of the song, I can only say... I get it. That is to say that I feel, as he said, I feel like everyone has felt this before. And I can honestly say yes I have. <laughs> and the song itself just feels like raw emotions that you can literally just sit in. Or maybe that's just me. Maybe I like sitting in sad boy hours. The song gets me fallen by uh, Trevor Daniel vibes. That's peak sad boy hours. <laughs> and as I said before, that is the last song, which means this is the end of the first part. Oh, this was a bit more stressful than I thought it was going to be, but it was also fun to try to put everything together, even after I just wrote an entire outline to keep myself on track. But yeah, that's as much as I'm going to uh, say for this video, because brain's getting a bit too chaotic and we're not going to be able to focus for much longer. So, this just uh, pushes me into the stereotypical YouTuber outro where I as a stereotypical YouTuber would ask you to do the following. Oh my heck, my brain. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified of whenever I post, and put any type of questions, comments, concerns, or ideas for future videos into the comments section down below. Now with all of that being said, my name is Toki Uzuru, aka Toki, and this is Toki saying Toki out.